Our next speaker will be no uh, stranger to you. It's Dr. Tom, he's not talking, well, there's probably flags in there somewhere. I mean, who am I kidding? I haven't looked at his slides, but I can, I can bet there'll be a flag in there somewhere. Uh, and he's gonna be telling us about World War I. We're not really in height order, I'm afraid. Right, um, so recently in Liverpool we had the poppies, and uh, poppies, of course, uh, are there to remember the falling of the First World War. And it got me thinking, I'd, I'd never really heard a good explanation for how the First World War started, so I thought I'd look into it, and this is the results of what I've done looking into it. Now, we're all familiar with Blackadder Goes Forth, right? Now, the First World War did not start because, as Baldrick says, Archie Duke shot an ostrich because he was hungry. And um, Blackadder's cynicism is, is, is a bit misplaced. So you need to have a look at what Europe looked like. Very, very different to how it looks today. Very, very few countries. This is a time of empire. In the middle, you've got the German Empire and the Austria-Hungary Empire. And you've also got France, Russia, and little Serbia down there. Now, the, Austra the Austro-Hungarian Empire had not been around for very long. It was formed for the compromise of 1876, uh, 1867, so the whole country's a compromise. Their awful flag is a terrible compromise. Um, and you have Archduke Franz Ferdinand in line to the throne. Now, Germany, uh, before it was unified, was a huge mess of uh, kingdoms and city-states and duchies, that sort of thing. Uh, the most powerful being Prussia here in blue. And Prussia had a lot of success in the 1860s under a guy called Otto von Bismarck. And they fought a series of short, decisive wars against Denmark, Austria, and most importantly, France, the Franco-Prussian War. So on this wave of uh, German nationalism that Otto von Bismarck, uh, von Bismarck created, uh, Germany was proclaimed in 1871. So it hadn't been around for very long but by the time of the First World War. Um, Wilhelm of Prussia uh, uh, proclaimed emperor, Kaiser, that's the flag they ended up using at the time. And Bismarck turned to peace. And he put together a whole series of treaties with various people designed to uh, isolate France, stop France from having any allies. And um, that would ensure peace in Europe, including uh, an, ally, uh, an, uh, an alliance with Russia. But Wilhelm II comes in. He becomes Kaiser in 1888. And he fires Bismarck in 1890. And things begin to unravel. Uh, Germany loses the allegiance with Russia, and it ends up with France on one side, Russia on the other. Terrible. And Bismarck said a couple of very prophetic things. He said, the crash will come 20 years after my departure if things go on like this. And one day the Great European War will come out of some damn foolish thing in the Balkans. Fast forward about 20 years to the Balkans, to Sarajevo with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Now, he's down there to visit Sarajevo on military maneuvers, and some Serbian nationalists, they don't want Austria interfering in the Balkans, so they want him dead. One of the assassins, or would-be assassins, is this guy down here, Gavrilo Princip. So the route of the parade that he goes on is published ahead of time. One of the assassins throws a bomb, goes off, misses him, and um, uh, wounds a bunch of people. Um, and instead of getting away, he thinks, Actually, let's go and visit the wounded in hospital. And he goes back in his car. Car breaks down outside a cafe, outside a cafe where Gavrilou Princip's gone to have a cup of coffee. So Prince gets up uh, and uh, shoots the Archduke and his wife dead. Now, this starts off with the July crisis because Austria-Hungary blames Serbia and may give them an ultimatum that's designed to be rejected. So, of course, Serbia does reject it. But Serbia is allied with Russia and Russia begins to mobilize against Austria-Hungary. Germany is allied with Austria-Hungary, so declares war against France and Russia. Now, Germany um, spent about 10 years preparing for this eventuality with something called the Schlieffen Plan, which is quite a complicated military plan, but the idea is that Russia's big, but it'll take ages to get mobilized. So what you do is you quickly go, um, go west, knock out France, and then you go east and you take out Russia before they're mobilized but it's a really complicated plan. It has to be executed very, very, very quickly. But you might be thinking, well, what about the UK, uh, Britain? Britain didn't have any treaty obligations and, you know, an island fortress with the world's greatest navy. If, if Britain wanted to, we could just stay out of it. But something happens which brings Britain into it, which is the invasion of Belgium. Because to execute the Schlieffen plan, Germany needs to uh, invade France, and the quickest way is to avoid all the fortifications and go in through Belgium. But Belgium's neutral. And Belgium says, well, no, you can't let us through. Uh, you, Belgium says to the German army, you can't come through. 
Um, so uh, Belgium invokes the uh, Treaty of London, where Belgium's new neutrality is guaranteed by, by Britain. Germany says, that's a piece of paper, you're not going to get a war after that, are you? And of course they did. So that's how the First World War started, and you end up with uh, the UK, France and Russia, uh, and of course Soviet, at war with Germany and Austria-Hungary. And the rest is history. Thank you.